Hey, it's Steve, welcome back to Clear Direct. This is not a build video per se, this is more of an update video. For a couple reasons, I'll get into that for a second. Um, I will also want to update you on just kind of a couple things before we get into the update on where the Rans S21 is. First off, RV15 has been announced, it's at Oshkosh. We're getting a lot of new data about it. I'm collecting data and I'm gonna eventually put out a comparison video between RV15, Rans S21, Kit Fox, all those things to follow up a previous video but I'm waiting for more real world performance numbers. So it might be a while. I did an initial reaction video. You can check it out here. Um, the other thing I wanna update you on is I teased a trailer that I'm working on. It, I, we had an amazing experience recently at a fly-in winery. Wait till the end to see the full trailer. Some great drone shots got to fly the Bonanza off airport to this awesome uh, vineyard in Paso Robles, California. I'm about to head out to Seattle to fly it overnight to Houston tonight and then back tomorrow and then back to the build because I got another week off. So I'm making a ton of progress and it doesn't feel like a ton of progress but it kind of is, and let's just get into the build and the update. First off, the panel. I got the inserts finally finished, okay? Another shout out to Send Cut Send. They're again giving you guys a 15% discount on anything fabricated by them. Okay, so aluminum inserts, they're even doing carbon fiber now, which is exciting. I have no idea how that works. They are amazing, so let's check out the redone panel. You can check out the, my previous video to, to see why I needed to change the, the geometry of some of the inserts and holes and whatnot. But I took the opportunity to optimize some of the printing. So I, I added another end number on the right side because this is gonna be an awesome training uh, vehicle because this switch right here is gonna force this G3X touch into a manual reversion mode and become the PFD. Okay, so anyway, enough on that. I've talked ad nauseum about that. I updated this with the current version. It's been tweaked just a hair to include um, not just experimentals. And then now these are final installed, which is super exciting. I realized that these holes here is not is gonna make this panel not um, as easily removable as if I just cut out this entire quadrant and was able to slip the carbon panel off over the those so i'm just gonna live with it like it is hopefully the panel never needs to come off or if it does then i'm probably gonna have to take off um, throttle quadrants but there's a look at the other left uh the left insert so the logo still looks good the end number is no longer chopped off by the top of the g3x touch frame and then i uh, moved these these fonts around a little bit just to enable uh, the fact that they won't be uh, covered up by any of the actual switches. So those are now optimized and it is all final installed. So let's take a look at the back of some of this and please pardon some of the spaghetti. Okay, that's gonna hopefully get cleaned up as much as I can. It's an art form that I do not possess. So I will um, consult some people and figure out how best to optimize that. But the G3X touch uh, number two or the MFD side is pretty simple. Just one high density connector right there. CAN bus, power, and then it's got some redundancy in from, I believe the GEA 28, which is right here. So this is the thing that I have has the most to be wired yet because of the engine. Engine's not here. I have all the sensors I need to, to do all the wiring there but that's gonna be another big challenge. We got, uh, of course, you know, the, the ground bar right here. And then um, this was kind of a fun little project was figuring out how to stabilize or, or support the rear of the GTR 200 and GNX 375. So I just created a couple of C channels there to support those and you can see there's only one um, rivet per side right now and that is to enable when I put this the top skins on the top of the boot cow skins on 
Uh, I want this to be able to move just a hair to line up the pre-drilled, match-drilled uh, holes right here. Because if I just lock that in, there would be absolutely no movement, and I don't want that quite yet. So once I get the top skins on, I'll reach on underneath, drill two holes, and then lock, uh, lock that in with a couple more rivets. The backing plates, these were pretty straightforward. So this, this is a backing plate so that the GTR uh, 200B can slide out as without having to disconnect any any D subs. Um, and then the same thing with the GNX 375. Again, ugh, I'm seeing my screen and looking at the grossness that is this this wiring right now. Apologies to those of you similar to me that are a bit OCD. But um, okay, over to the PFD right here. We got the GSU 25C with the two connectors, and then of course. The, we talked about the reason why I have this connected or um, hooked up here. If you don't have a really, really solid panel, you don't want to have the Adahars connected to the panel, but this is, this is going to be rock solid and a fine solution. I do have this optional connector going to the uh, air ink. Uh, I can't exactly remember right now why it's um, optional. You could use other ports, but there is some reason why I, I wanted to go with that. So here is the, just the switch backlight. This will just turn on and off the LEDs rather than have a LED rheostat, just a simple on off switch in case it's too bright flying at night. And then ignition backup switch. Um, I changed the dimensions to have that fit a little bit tighter. And then of course, like, you, like, you, like I said before, I changed the spacing so that I can have a washer in here to support, a black washer to support the push pull handle for the cables for the cabin heat and parking brake. All right, that's all pretty much stuff you've seen. Oh, the battery backup, I've moved up a little bit because I sat in in the cockpit and noticed that it was pretty close to the top of the rudder pedal, which is no good. I do not want anything blocking my top of my foot to be hit, able to hit my left rudder uh, or left brakes right there. Speaking of brakes and rudders, brakes are gonna be fairly soon but the rudder pedals are in. The, the floorboard took a lot of time. One is I had to source foam. I finally found some really good closed cell foam from uh, a company in California because everywhere else seemed to be out of the exact kind of foam that I needed. And I painstakingly cut each kind of triangle and, and it is fully solid um, foam wise in here, so. A little bit of, um, ma mainly for noise protection, noise dampening, but also a little bit for thermal because the exhaust is going to be, you know, literally right here. Oh, and I had to also uh, redo a nut plate, a couple nut plates underneath the floor. So I had it riveted in and had to drill out those rivets, remove the floor to, to reinstall some nut plates that weren't sitting quite right. But that was okay. Got that done. Just a, one reason why I haven't, you haven't seen a lot more progress. So this uh, bracket that mounts the pulley return cable is um, clearly going to go on the front of the firewall. So that's just test fit in there right now. I'm going to obviously take it off when I put the firewall back on. But that feels good to have done. But everything is going to be related. Everything kind of flows into the next topic of conversation. So let's take a look at the wires, or excuse me, the rudder cables that go backwards and see what I learned about some remote LRU installation locations. Okay, so what we have here is my audio panel, the uh, GMA 245R, and then a GTR 20. Essentially the same as this, but just mounted back here, radio 2. I created a, a uh, a mounting bracket, if you will, out of, I think it's 63,000th aluminum, 6061. But um, I was only taking into consideration the push rod for the elevator. I did not initially take into consideration the rudder cables right here. So clearly this is gonna have to move well out of the way of those cables. So I think I've got enough room to slide it a good inch or so uh, outboard and create enough clearance right here. But I gotta do some measurements and figure out that. But but again, that kind of leads from, you know, putting in those to make sure everything is gonna work well together and integrate well together, not interfere before final installing everything. So I was pretty happy that I discovered that at a pretty early on stage and I can move that pretty simply. I still haven't yet committed to a location for my transponder antenna right there. 
potentially there or potentially uh, just in front of that um, station right there. But uh, I'll read through kind of all the considerations that I have to uh, consider in the G3X Touch uh, manual. Uh, next up is the GSA 28 autopilot servos. You can see they're just kind of sitting there. They're not even bolted in at all, but I needed to get the sticks installed with the aileron cables so that I could line up where the capstan on the GSA 28 goes. Well, first off, I've got to change the servo arm out to the capstan, which I have, I just need to do that. And then I can put some tension on this wire so that it's in its final uh, location and then get this final located. I guess it doesn't have to be final located, but I want it to be final located so that then I can um, just have it bolted down. Nothing's gonna shift or move on me and then finish off this gob of wiring. Clearly, this isn't just the autopilot wiring. It's everything that goes back from the panel. And we'll talk about that in a second. Let's look at the pitch, uh, the pitch servo right here. That's gonna, that, that uh, control arm is gonna stay, uh, I think like that, and then connect to this right there and clearly give it a push, push pull. Um, I, I thought it's pretty neat how this linkage works. It goes down to, down to this linkage. I've got this disconnected right now for the conflict with the, uh, well, it's just the conflict with the Clicos in the back right there. But that fits right in right there and uh, transposes the power towards the aft. And then I can hook up the tail, or the horizontal tail, and the, the pitch trim servo to that wire right there. I've got that going through some conduit and towards the back. See how everything's kind of related and depends on another thing? You see two low end cables right here. I've got the beacon mounted. So let's take a look at the beacon. If you recall, this was a hole that I had that I was just going to install the ELT antenna. But as Ruben pointed out, it was too close to my comm antennas up there at the tips. So I had a gaping hole, but I didn't have a plan for an anticollision beacon. So I found one, this one wasn't too expensive. It's not the most, you know, high quality one in the world, but it, it fills the gap and also fills the need, not need, the desire to have an anti-collision beacon. I finally figured out, basically figured out, I haven't, haven't specifically figured out how I'm going to attach the fairing. The basic decision is to do uh, rivet nuts, rivet nuts. So I bought a rivet nut puller since we're going to have to use a rivet nut puller for the seats and a couple other applications. And I was kind of intimidated by it because I did not enjoy the process on the underneath the seat pans for the seat rails. So I bought a, the proper thing that I, I need to get that done, but that's gonna also be nice because it's gonna uh, allow me to attach the fairing because I'd want it to be detachable. The USB charger is all hooked up and ready to go. That works great. Well, it works great. It's been bench tested. It has not This whole system has not been powered up. So let's talk about the what finishing of the wiring and we'll wrap this up. So clearly most of the wiring behind the panel is done with the exception of the GEA24, the engine analyzer. So uh, the next step is to figure out how best to run these wires aft so that they're not impeding the flight control cables. So I have to figure out that before I start running anything. And then, and then I can start terminating at the control sticks. It's got two of them, got these mounted. They're not permanent. There's no set screw in it quite yet. So that's going to be a challenge to get a 4-40 uh, set screw in there. I did tap the stick to 4 440. And so I just have to line everything up and then get the set screw in there to lock everything down. And then we've got the cables all route, routed. We just need to hook them up and terminate them. But you can see this bundle right here. Luckily, everything, of course, is is labeled. Speaking of which, there's stick trim up, stick trim down. And I'm not using the Ray Allen relay. Um, the vertical power integrates all the trim stuff uh, and then adds in speed control and then routes it down to the servos. So I don't, I could delete the Ray Allen relay, the REL2, I believe is what it was called. But there's other things such as like a, a bigger thickness. Let's see, the, the biggest gauge is right here. This is for pitot heat. I think that's a 16 gauge. 
And then there, or maybe even 14, I can't remember. But then there's some like 18 gauge stuff that goes out to the uh, landing lights and even the position and strobe lights. I kind of overdid the gauge on those for the, the little strobe and position lights because they're all LEDs and don't take much power, but I just wanted to make sure I was covered there. And then of course, boost pump, that's gonna have some, I think 16 gauge going to that, but that's gonna all be controlled by the vertical power, which I didn't show you the, the bigger connectors for the vertical power. So here's vertical power. I did have to take a chunk out of, out of this bracket. It just connects the radio mounts, if you will, to the airframe. But um, I filed it down, made it all smooth, but I also added just some electrical tape just to ensure that there's nothing that chafes right there because this has a little bit of a conflict. Okay, I hope that didn't ramble on too much. I hope you enjoyed that update. I will try to film more build stuff in the future. I'm not totally giving up on building, but I've been a little bit busy with some other projects. So let's look at one of those other projects and roll the trailer for Halter Ranch Fly-In Wineries. Until next time, it's Steve, your clear director.